Hello and welcome to the Energy Connect studio at India Energy Week 2024 in Goa with me Chiranjeev Sengupta. I'm delighted to have with me here joining us in the studio Dr. Klaus Braun, Global Director of Research and Development at Ebara Elliott Energy. Thank you so much Dr. Klaus for joining us today. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. And just to start off, could you give us a, a concept of what is behind Elliott, Ebara Elliott Energy's rebranding? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, the world of energy is changing. It's changing very rapidly. Um, we are moving from a carbon hydrocarbon society with oil and gas toward a sustainability kind of uh, energy world. The entire energy stream is changing. Um, so we are the company, and that is Ebara Elliott Energy Company. We obviously have to change with that. Ebara and Elliott, each one of them, have served the energy industry for each about 100 years. And obviously, we want to continue to serve the energy industry. Um, so we have to change. So there's really three things that are happening right now. Uh, one of them is very visible. The other two are not quite so visible. One is the restructuring of the company. Um, as I mentioned, Elliot and Navarra, we've been in this industry for about 100 years. We've been under the same governance, the same company for about the last 20 years. Um, now we need to change and we need to be organizationally more dynamic to be able to transition towards this new energy world. And so we have basically reorganized ourselves within Ibarra and Elliot so that all energy pertaining businesses all are integrated into one business so that we can do a better job of following this change in the, in the energy world. Uh, the other change that's probably less visible is we've formed internally a energy sustainability organization. That energy sustainability organization is an internal and external organization to make sure that we understand what needs to be done from a market, customer, and service perspective to be able to implement all the actions necessary to become an energy sustainability company, not just an energy supporting company. And then number three, and also very, very important, is we've initiated a significant initiative to develop a whole host of new products that are focused on sustainability. So we've been traditionally focused on oil and gas, conventional energy transition products, ethylene, polyethylene, all the things and so on. And now our focus needs to shift toward decarbonization, being hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and so on. So we started an initiative to develop a new family of products for all of these markets, including hydrogen, CO2, etc. So those are the three steps to change the company to really transition itself from traditional markets toward what's happening in the world of energy. Circling back to energy sustainability, which you said is one of the core competencies of the rebranded Ebara Elliott Energy. How are you using that and your technologies of the future to help companies achieve low emissions? Now, that's really an interesting question also because it really has two answers. The first answer is our traditional conventional products, right? We've been serving the oil and gas industry for 70, 80 years, maybe longer, both on the Ibarra and the Elliott side and now on the integrated side. Um, that has to continue because that industry isn't going away, right? So we need to continue supporting that industry but the big difference there comes in with making our products more efficient. How do you make the output of emissions lower, CO2 emissions lower by making your product more efficient? So that's the first answer to the question. The second answer is actually more interesting. When you look at the world of energy, you have energy producers and you have energy consumers, right? But the producers and the consumers, they're generally not geographically at the same place. So you produce your energy some, you got to get it from point A to point B. And what do you have to do to do that? You need compressors and pumps. You transport your energy through a pipeline, you transport your energy by ship, by barge, marine transportation. Interestingly, most people think of when energy transport is talked about, they think about electric power lines, right? High voltage line. Well, actually something like 80 to 90% of the world's energy is transported in the form of a fluid, either gas or the liquid. And what do you do with the gas or a liquid when you want to transport it, you need a pump or you need a compressor. And that's where we come in. That's our product line. We are a turbo machine we manufacture. We manufacture compressors, pumps, turbines, expanders, and so on. All of these products are needed to get energy from point A to point B. So kind of to summarize my two answers, there's really an A, which is the conversion of energy, where we've been working on forever. We've been working in acetylene, polyethylene, 
refineries with products, compressors, turbines, expanders, and so on. And now we see this transition where you need to focus on hydrogen transportation for getting hydrogen from point A to point B. But you also need to transport carbon dioxide because if you want to decarbonize your fossil energy, most of the energy in the world is still fossil, you need to transport then your CO2 from wherever you're producing it to where you're going to sequester it. All of that requires pumps and turbines, and that's where our product development comes in. It's really interesting to see how Ebara Elliott Energy is getting ready for the future and how you're also catering to a whole sort of industries across the spectrum. And, you know, rotating equipment is one of your niche and, and one of the dominant areas where you uh, prosper. Can you tell us what other technologies are in the pipeline? Yeah, there's obviously, and I mentioned this earlier, there is a significant product development initiative going on to be able to better su support the sustainable um, energy industry. So products for decarbonization. Um, you need to have compressors to transport carbon dioxide into wherever you're going to sequester it in a geological formation. You need to have compressors or pumps to transport hydrogen. Hydrogen can be, toward, can be transported as a gas or can be transported as a liquid. So over the last couple of years, um, we released a couple of products. We've basically started a major initiative toward the sustainability about four or five years ago with the first couple of products coming out about a year and a half, two years ago. So we released our uh, flex up compressor, which is focused on the hydrogen market. This is actually a very neat, novel compressor idea that takes uh, a proven concept of compression, rearranges it, and makes it much more cost effective, um, more viable, and also more um, easy to operate for operators um, for hydrogen transport. Similarly, we've come out with our CO2 phase product over the last two years for carbon dioxide transport. Uh, we released a liquid hydrogen pump on the Ibarra side of our business um, last year. There are several new product families that are being under development. Obviously, I cannot really talk about products that have yet to be released, um, but uh, these are exciting technologies. They will move the state of the art of both compression pumps and expansion technology um, for turbo machinery with a specific focus on sustainability. But I do want to also emphasize though is we are not neglecting our traditional customers. As I mentioned before, we need to continue to improve the performance of machinery that is currently installed in the fossil energy industry. Right? That industry isn't going away. Most of the world's energy is still fossil energy and will be for the foreseeable future. So if we want to address the greenhouse gas problem, we cannot just look at hydrogen and CO2 for the future, we need to also look at what are we doing right now and how we, can we upgrade and improve our current facility to be more efficient to produce less carbon dioxide. And so we're continuously improving our pumps, compressors, expanders for our current customers in the oil and gas industry to also reduce emissions. Right. And no conversation about the future of energy can be complete without talking about AI and digitalization. How do you feel that AI and digitalization have impacted the industry? And where are you with that at Evara Elliott Energy? Well, the terms digitalization and AI have been used, abused, and misabused over the last um, two years. We look at digitalization and AI and digital twins and all the wonderful terms that go along with that as tools that are part of our product, right? So digitalization, new control system, new digital twins, artificial intelligence, all need to be part of your current product offer. They're not freestanding product. So let's say we are a turbo machinery developer. So we have control system, we have instrumentation, we have measurement, we have monitoring. All of that is instrumentation, digitalization, and requires advanced technologies such as digitization. Now, we have uh, just released last year our Genesis control system. Um, that is a state-of-the-art product that comes with a uh, digital twin for performance of compressors um, that also comes with some very, very advanced uh, vibration diagnostic um, technology. It comes with very nice user-friendly uh, remote monitoring technology. Um, we're currently developing um, advanced digital twins that are going to be integrated into this Genesis control system for steam turbines, for pumps, for expanders, and also um, for our cryodynamic pipeline. So all of these digital twins are going to be integrated into those control systems. What a digital twin does, it helps you improve to monitor 
and diagnose your equipment. It tells you if something's going wrong, if you're losing efficiency, if you're losing performance. And that's really the end goal of all digitalization. It's not something by its own. It is technology that helps our operators to run their machinery more efficiently, more effectively over a wider operating range, be more user friendly, just help them to operate our machinery and makes it cheaper and better for them. And so that's our focus in all of our digitization efforts. There's many other initiatives within um, a bar AL you go on currently on the digitization, fleet monitoring, more advanced AI technology for digital monitoring, um, prediction of what our um, equipment is going to do over the long term, um, maintenance based on diagnostic rather than on hourly operation. All of these technologies are currently being implemented. Some of them are already implemented. Um, but the main point of it is we develop uh, fairly advanced digital tools for our turbo machinery with an emphasis on it has to support our turbo machinery. It's not just a toy to play with. Right. Finally, we are here in Goa for India Energy Week 2024, back in its second edition and surrounded by a galaxy of exhibitors and conferences. What are your thoughts? Oh, it's a great conference. It's uh, really moved from what used to be more of a regional kind of thing to, I would call it a global event now, because you have uh, not just Indian operators and, uh, and manufacturers and vendors here, but you have everybody, and I wouldn't even say Asian, but you have the entire world now coming to India to show their products or interaction networking. So it's a great event for networking. It's a great event to see what we're doing, what our competitors are doing. We're advertising, obviously, what we're doing. It's also a great opportunity for us to meet with our Indian customers in a very informal, friendly, and open setting. Oh so yeah, it's a great conference for us. We're looking forward to continuing participating in India Energy Week in the future. Right. Dr. Close, thank you so much for your fascinating insights. It's a pleasure talking to you, and thank you for coming and joining us here in the studio. Absolutely. My pleasure, and I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be back with more videos and studio interviews from India Energy Week in Goa. Until then, goodbye.